Thousands of Starbucks stores are closing for a day-long racial bias training, and that started a conversation on what companies could and should do to educate employees about diversity. The training is in response to the April arrests of two black men at a Starbucks in Philadelphia after a manager called the cops because they hadn't ordered anything. We wanted to know exactly what happens in one of those sessions. So I brought along some of my coworkers and we're here at the Kaleidoscope Group to have a mock experience. Hi, Doug. Hey, Melissa, Melissa, nice to meet you. Doug Harris is an expert who helps train companies on diversity and inclusion. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Today we're going to be talking about what we call a third party. Normally when we go into a company, they have a vision of success, they have an assessment of what's the problems today. Here's our strategy that we're going to use as it relates to succeeding. And so then we set up a long-term, like three-year education strategy, each of those designs being very unique, similar content, but organized towards them achieving their vision. Just about 30 seconds, just to end. In trios, have a conversation. You know that there's something wrong. I mean, I feel like you kind of have a responsibility to speak up. So it's not like this is a kumbaya event. We're trying to get at real issues and real thoughts, so we have to be able to receive it. So there are people who really need to do hardcore racial work. There's some others who may need gender work. Some can't get along with younger people. So you have to find vehicles that allows or addresses the individual concerns of all involved, but with the goal being the same, an inclusive environment. The Kaleidoscope Group trainings are broken into different segments to facilitate conversation. We'll sometimes use video modules, case studies, scenarios, all of that to kind of bring the content in that's not naturally in the room. Our goal is about creating an environment that's inclusive, that values and leverages the difference. When people begin to shift their thoughts and beliefs, that's good, but we really want the outcome to be people showing up and doing things differently. Behaviors is what we're really measuring. We're not psychiatrists trying to change your thoughts and beliefs, but we are saying you need to address those if you're going to be able to implement this behavior. I feel like everyone's very engaged today and, and yes. is wanting to share. How do you deal with it when you are in a situation where maybe people are a little more reluctant to share or reluctant to engage? One of the key traits we use is patience. You know, so we'll ask a question. And they'll look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, no, oh, y'all gonna be here for four hours. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they'll start warming up. Just ease in with it. And then when they speak, you say things like, thank you so much for saying. Training is an enabler that gives people new behaviors and skills to do. I think accountability for performance and implementing what you learn in a way that we're checking on it, we're doing surveys, people are giving input to it, really creates the change. And then, as you learn where the challenges are, now let's put in place the second phase to enhance the development as well. Training without accountability is like, you know, entertainment. For companies implementing diversity training, there's a difference between wanting actual change and just checking off a box for legal purposes. Is it the initial step or is it the only step? Is it the next step? If it's the only step, it's a box check. If it's the beginning step, it can be seen very impactful. We're serious and now we're going to reinforce it with this next step. So if we were to come in and support them, we would create a strategy where the initial step would be seen as just creating the alignment alignment, uh, enlightenment, and then uh, the importance of what we're dealing with. As for Starbucks, the coffee chain is making changes aside from the racial bias training. The company announced it will even let people who don't buy anything sit in its stores or use its bathrooms. These changes could mean the store is serious about implementing lasting change. So you got to implement an accountable system around it and reinforce that if you're going to get real change. But the other reality is that some people, just based on who they are, they'll go to a session and come out like, man, I really see that difference. And I don't need the company to do all this stuff. I'm going to go be a different person. Other people will be like, hey, it was a nice experience. They need a little bit more accountability. It's just the world we live in. So we help support that to achieve the measurable uh, objectives. Because how you start off seeing a person will impact how you respond to when they do do something. 
And so what love does is it allows you to realize they're only human because I'm only human. 